Democrats and Republicans came together this week to pass a short-term budget deal, averting that government shutdown with President Biden's signature to seal the deal last night. Scripps News congressional correspondent Stephanie Liebergen digs into what it would take to see more bipartisanship in Congress. In a place where members are accusing each other of throwing elbows, the word bipartisan might not spring to mind. But Americans wish it would, and some lawmakers think the appetite for change is higher than ever. Representative Derek Kilmer has been in Congress for more than a decade. Being a pragmatic, problem-solving centrist is not a proven ratings grabber. And for four years, he led the House Select Committee on the Modernization of Congress, which included looking at ways to improve bipartisanship. We took testimony from members who said, you know, I showed up for freshman orientation and literally it said, Democrats, you get on this bus, Republicans, you get on that bus. And so we are polarized almost systemically from the beginning. Poll after poll has found Americans want lawmakers to work together, but changing the culture in the Capitol is hard. There's an understanding that the status quo is not acceptable, that people don't people don't want to be in an institution that A, doesn't get much done, and B, you know, that according to recent polling is less popular than head lice, colonoscopies, and the rock band Nickelback. Margaret Spellings was the Secretary of Education under President George W. Bush and now leads the Bipartisan Policy Center. She thinks Congress would benefit from getting back to regular order. We've gotten away from kind of the regular structures of the Congress where committees hear major pieces of legislation. There's an amendments process. There's testimony. You kind of grind through all of that. At, at the committee level and then at the House. Laws passed in a bipartisan way have more durability. Those bills receive more scrutiny as they're debated and then they're less likely to be overturned when the majority changes parties. Bipartisanship really makes for the best policy making that can provide kind of what we have in common and a steady as she goes approach to solving our nation's biggest challenges. Finding a place for that exchange of ideas is part of the problem. There's no communal workspace on Capitol Hill where members and staff from opposing parties can come together, something the Modernization Committee recommended changing. Other simple things could help too, like intermixing Democrats and Republicans during hearings. Kilmer's committee showed that can boost conversation across the aisle. So it fundamentally changed from this sort of Hatfields and McCoys on top of a dais dynamic to one that was engaging on problem solving. We need to do more of that uh, within the institution of Congress. Some bipartisanship is happening in Congress, even if it doesn't always make the headlines. But bipartisan efforts tackling some of the country's biggest issues, like immigration and government debt, have remained elusive. Kilmer and Spelling say seeing success on issues like that will require leadership willing to stand up for bipartisanship and compromise. Stephanie Liebergen, Scripps News, Washington. I mentioned this in the last hour, but people have studied the numbers in terms of legislation passed in this current Congress, and it's on track to become the least wow. productive Congress since the Great Depression. So there's hope for bipartisanship, yeah. but not a lot of legislation or right, the proof. execution of, of doing the job. Yes, okay. indeed.